Hello students, today we are going to see poem number 5, A Legend of Northland. So, A Legend of Northland, written by Forb Carey, is a ballad. It is a short story of a selfish old woman who was not ready to part with even a small cake and give it to a hungry and tired fellow human being. <clears throat> so, this is the summary which I am going to say now. So, as the legend goes, Saint Peter was once walking the earth away up in the some cold region of north. This must be probably Norway. The phrase is, the hours of the day are few and nights are so long in winter that they cannot sleep them through, suggests this place. He was hungry, thirsty, cold and tired by the end of the day. At that time, he saw an old woman baking cakes on her earth, on her hearth. So he went up to her and asked her to give him just one of her cakes. The old woman agreed, but she could not part with the cakes that were already prepared because she thought there were they were too big to give away. She therefore baked a small cake. However, as she looked at it while it was getting baked, she thought that the cake was also too big to give away. She then took a very small amount of dough and baked a wafer thin cake. However, she could not part with that too because according to her, when she ate the cakes, they seemed small yet were too large to give away. When the, go when the good Saint Peter saw how miser miserly and mean the old lady was, he got angry with her. Even though he was a saint, he punished her saying that she did not deserve to live among humans with food, shelter and a fire to keep her warm. He therefore changed her into a woodpecker because he wanted that she too, she too would have to keep on boring and boring and boring for food in the hard, dry woods of trees. The scarlet cap which the old woman was wearing when all this happened remained intact on her head, but all her other clothes got burned. These are the colors of woodpecker. The poet says that every boy has seen her in woods, boring and boring for her food. This was the summary of poem. Now, this is the longest poem of your <coughs> entire textbook. Now, we are going to see it by stanza. Explanation of each stanza I will do. So, first stanza. Away, away in Northland, where the hours of the day are few and the nights are so long in winter that they cannot sleep them through. So, in the region around the North Pole, that is Northland, the duration of day is very less because its position is such that sun rays reach for a very less time. When this area is experiences winter season, the duration of night is very long and the daytime of hours very less. In line 4, they refers to the people who lives in this region. The poet says that the duration of the night time is so long that he sorry, that the people cannot sleep them through. If they go to the bed, take a few hours of sleep and then they wake up. It is still night time. He wants to emphasize on the fact that the duration of the night is very long. Now, second paragraph. Oh, sorry, second stanza, where they harness the swift reindeer to the sledges when it snows and the children look like beer cups in their funny furry clothes. Now, some <coughs> difficult words, sledges. Sledges means a vehicle or runner for conveying loads or passengers over snow or ice often pulled by draught animals. Then, to harness, okay. To harness means to tie reindeers with a rope to sledge so that it can be used for transformation. Sorry, transportation. And then swift. That is something which runs very fast. So Northland region experience severe cold conditions. It is a snowy area. The reindeer is an animal which is found in the polar region. 
people tie their reindeers to sledges and then the reindeers pull the sledges. He adds that the children look like young ones of the beer because they were funny looking clothes made up of fur which is like the furry skin of beer. Stanza third. <clears throat> Then tell them a curious story. I don't believe it is true. And yet you may learn a lesson if I tell you, if I tell the tale to you. So curious means strange. In line one, they refers to the parents or elders and them refers to the children or the younger generation. The children, sorry, the elders of the Northland region tells a strange and interesting story to the younger generation. The poet says that he does not think that the story is true. But if he tells the story to the reader, maybe the reader could learn a lesson from it. The story gives an important message. Next stanza, stanza number four. <clears throat> Once when the good Saint Peter lived in the world below and warned about it preaching just as he did, you know. So Saint Peter, an apostle apsto of Christ, <clears throat> a disciple follower of Jesus, sorry, Jesus Christ. Then preaching, preaching means to give a religious talk. So what this stanza states that the story is about Saint Peter. When Saint Peter used to live in the world and went around giving religious lectures to the people, just like all saints do, then an incident happened. Okay, now stanza number five. He came to the door of cottage in traveling round the earth where a little woman was making cakes and baking them on the hearth. Now, what do you mean by hearth? It is fireplace where you do cooking. Now explanation. When Saint Peter was moving around the world giving religious lectures to the people, he reached the door of a cottage where a small woman was making cakes. She was making the cakes in the fireplace. Stanza number 6. And being faint with fasting, faint means weak. For the days was almost done, he asked her for, from her stores of cakes to give him a single one. So as Saint Peter had not eaten anything the entire day, he was very hungry and was feeling weak. So he went to this sorry so he went to this woman who was baking cakes and he asked for one cake out of the many cakes that she had baked. Stanza number seven. So she made a very little cake, but as it baking lay, she looked at it and thought it seemed too large to give it away. So the woman was selfish. She did not give cake from her store. Instead, she started making a very small cake, small cake for Saint Peter. She did not want to share her things, but when she put the cake for baking, she looked at it and thought that this cake was too big to be given to someone. Okay. Stanza number 8. Therefore, she needed another. She needed another. Vapas load jo hum log baanthe hai. Thik hai? Boonthe hai. Thik hai? Woh bolte hai. And still a smaller one. But it looked when she turned it over as large as first had done. So, needed to make the from the floor. Thik hai? So, boonna hai. Sa bolte na? Ata boonna. So, the little miser woman thought that the cake was too big to, give, to be given away. So, she started making another small cake. When she looked at that cake, she again felt that it was as big as previous one. Again, she was not ready to give this smaller cake to Saint Peter. <coughs> Stanza number 9. Then she took a tiny scrap of duff and rolled and rolled it flat, sorry, rolled it flat and banged it thin as wafer, but she could not part with that <coughs> scrap. That is small amount. <clears throat> so the third time she took a very small amount of dough and rolled it. The poet says that she rolled and rolled to lay emphasis on the fact that she rolled the dough and made it very thin like wafer and baked it. But she was so greedy that she could not give that thin piece of bread to the saint. Stanza number 10. For she said, my cakes that seems too small when I eat of them myself are yet too large to give away. So she put them on the shelf. The woman reasoned that when she ate the cakes, she felt that they were very small. But if she had to give them to someone, she felt that they were too big to be given away. 
she put all the cakes on the shelf of her kitchen and she did not give any cake to saint peter stanza 11 then good saint peter grew angry for he was hungry and faint and he surely and surely such a woman was enough to provoke a saint provoke means to make someone angry so saint peter became angry he was very hungry he was feeling he was feeling very weak and the selfish woman was not ready to give him even a small cake this behavior of greedy woman angered the saint <clears throat> stanza 12 and he said you are far too selfish to dwell in human form to have both food and shelter and fire to keep you warm dwell dwell means to live so saint peter cos shrap dena theek hai the woman and said that she was very selfish she did not deserve to live like human being he added that god had given her food shelter fire to keep warm but she had become selfish for all resources she had she did not want to share them with anybody <clears throat> stanza number 13 Now you shall build as the birds do and shall get your scanty food by boring and boring and boring all day in the hard dry wood now scanty scanty means very less very little boring means making a hole in something with a tool or by digging so boring matlab so khadda khodna theek hai one kind of hole banana so saint peter cursed the woman cursed the woman that hence she would become a bird because she did not deserve the human form she shall become a bird and just like birds build their houses by boring into wood and collect the very little food by working hard the entire day similarly she would also work hard in dry wood all day and get little food and make a small piece a sorry, small place for herself to live in stanza number 14 Then up she went to the chimney, never speaking a word, and out of the top flew a woodpecker, for she was charged, for she was ch- changed to a bird. So as soon as Saint Peter cursed the woman, she did not get chance to speak for herself, because that very moment she flew up to the roof through the chimney and flew out in the form of a bird. Saint Peter's curse had converted the woman into <coughs> a bird. Stanza number fifteen. She had a scarlet cap on her head, and that was left the same. But all the rest of her clothes were burned black as coal in the flame. Scarlet, scarlet means a brilliant red color. So when the woman turned into bird, at that time she was wearing a red colored cap on her head. This cap was there on bird's head, and also, <clears throat> but the woman's remaining clothes. had burned and turned black in color just like glow coal and the last stanza and every country school boy has seen her in the wood where she lives in trees till this very day boring and boring for food country country belonging to the countryside that is rural areas so people who live in the countryside even the small children who go to school seen this kind of bird in the woods <clears throat> they see that she stays there all days and keep on digging the wood with her beak to collect her food when the any child sees this kind of bird then his elder tell him this story they say that the bird used to be a woman earlier she was very greedy and so she was cursed by saint peter and turned into bird they get a teaching that they should not be greedy so that's the end of our poem <clears throat> now let us see literary devices poetic devices or you can say figures of speech of this poem so <clears throat> starting with first away away in northland it is your repetition because the word away is repeated right <clears throat> then where the hours of days are few it's a hyperbole because it's an overstatement that the hours of day are very few then and the nights are so long in winter again it's hyperbole it's an overstatement that nights are so long in winter then that they cannot sleep them th- through it is your ditoch because negation is used to convey a positive meaning that they are awake in the night 
Next, where they harness the swift reindeer <coughs> to sorry to the sledges when it's snow. It is your alliteration. The consonant sound W is repeated where and when. Okay. <coughs> then swift and sledges and snows. Now then, and the children looks like bear cubs. It is your simile because there is a direct comparison that children looks like bears, bear cubs. Then in the funny furry clothes, it is your alliteration because a consonant sound F is repeated. Then they tell them a curious story. This is your transferred epithet. The adjective curious has been transferred from people to story. I don't believe this true. This is your litotes. The negation is used to convey a positive meaning that the tale may be false. And yet you may learn a lesson if I tell you a tale. It is your alliteration. <coughs> the Y consonant sound T is repeated in tell and tale. And consonant sound Y in yet and you. Again consonant sound L learn and lesson. Repetition the word U is repeated for poetic effect. And next, once when the Saint Peter lived in the world below, that is your metonymy, <coughs> world below represents the earth, and walked about it preaching just as he did, you know. This is again metonymy, the word it represents the earth, and he represents the Jesus Christ. Then, he came to the door of cottage in traveling round the earth. It is your synecdoch, door stands for cottage, and <coughs> alliteration, consonant C is repeated in came and cottage. Where little woman was making cakes and baking them on <coughs> her, it is your internal rhyme, rhyming words making and baking are used in the same sentence, and alliteration is alliteration because consonant sound W is repeated in the words where woman and was. Okay, then. And being faint with fasting, for the day was almost done. Alliteration, consonant F is repeated in the words faint for and fasting and the sound of D in day and done. And metonymy, the words day was almost done, represents evening timing. Next paragraph, or you can say stanza. Sorry. He asked her from her store of cakes <coughs> to give him a single one. So it is your repetition. The word her is repeated for poetic effect. Then tautology, unnecessary use of words single and one which have the same meaning. Again alliteration because <coughs> consonant sound H is repeated in the words he, her and him. Next para. So she made a very little cake, but as it baking lay. This is your anastrophe. There is an inversion in the construction of the sentence for poetic effect. And illustration, consonant B is repeated in the words but and baking. Then she looked at it and though... Though it seemed too large to give it away, again this is your alliteration, consonant sound T is repeated 2 and 2. Next, therefore she needed another and still a smaller one, but it looked when she turned it <coughs> over as large as the first had done. Antithesis, Q antithesis, opposite words smaller and large are used in sentence for poetic effect. and <coughs> Similarly, direct comparison between the first and second cake. <coughs> the point of comparison is the size. Next, then she looked a tiny scrap of dough and rolled and rolled it to flat. Repetition, the word roll is repeated for the poetic effect. And baked it thin as wafer, but she could not part with that. So, this is simile, direct comparison between the size of the last cake and wafer. And <coughs> it is your litotes eggs as well. Negation is coming. Then, for she said, my cakes that seem too small when I eat 
of them myself are yet too large to give away. Antithesis, opposite words small and large are used in the same sentence. And repetition, the word too is repeated for the poetic effect. So she put them on the shelf. Alliteration, sh, consonant sound sh in she and shelf. The next, then good Saint Peter grew angry for he was, <coughs> sorry, for he was hungry and faint. So it is your internal rhyme, angry and hungry are used in the same sentence. And alliteration, consonant sound G for good grew and H in he and hungry. And surely such a woman was enough to provoke saint. It is your epigram, a pointed statement that such a woman could provoke a saint who is supposed to be very calm. So that is your epigram. Next. And he said, you are far too selfish to dwell in human form. Again, this is epigram, a pointed statement that woman was so selfish that she was not worth being a human being. Then, <coughs> to have both food and shelter and fire to keep you warm. It is your alliteration, consonant sound F is repeated in food fire. Then, now you shall build as the birds do. <coughs> And shall get your scanty food. Again, this is alliteration. Consonant sound, oh, sorry, con sound of consonant B is repeated in build and birds. Then by boring and boring and boring all day in the hard dry wood, it is repetition. The word boring is repeated for poetic effect. Then up she went through the chimney, never speaking a word. <coughs> it's your litotes. The negation conveys a positive meaning that she wants out of chimney silently. Then next. And out of the top flew a woodpecker for she was changed to bird. It is your metonymy. The woodpecker represents the later old woman. Next. She had a scarlet cap on her head. And that was left the same. It is your synecdoch because part head stands for the little woman. But all the rest of her clothes were burned black as coal in the flame. It is your simile. This is a direct comparison between the clothes of woman and coal. <coughs> then, last stanza we are going to see. And that will be the end of our poem. And every country schoolboy has seen her in the wood. This is your hyperbole and overstatement that every country schoolboy has seen her. And where she lives in the trees till this very day, boring and boring for food. Again, it is a repetition. Word boring is repeated for poetic effect. That's the end of our poem number 5 as well.